So uh, to kick off the show, we figured we should do a little preamble about E3 this year. I actually had a couple of questions to prime our discussion and sort of frame where we're going with this because this E3 is, in my view, fundamentally different, or at least maybe fundamentally different is the wrong way to say it, but it's definitely a different show than we've seen the last few years. So the first question that I want to want to ask or bring up is, is it just me or was this E3 seeming lackluster? I think it probably seems worse than what it is because it started and ended on a very low note, particularly, well, we'll get into it in a little bit. The EA, the EA and most of the Nintendo conference just were just complete write-offs. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Nintendo's conference didn't even make the half hour mark this year. Yep. I, I know that Nintendo never does a strong E3 show presence, or at least they haven't for the last few years, but they really felt like they just half-assed it this year. To be perfectly honest, it felt like Nintendo's uh, E3 conference should have been airing at, oh, 2 a.m. on uh, uh, cable news, on the cable news <laughs> channels as an infomercial. I wish they would have had Devolver slot instead. And they just wouldn't have done a conference, but we'll really get to that later. We yeah. have many thoughts. Most of um, them, what the fuck? Yeah. Not good. Okay, I was I was sitting there thinking about this today after I had watched the Nintendo conference earlier. Uh, I had a, a no-show client, so I, I actually had a chance to watch in the middle of the day and then think about it afterwards instead of cramming it before we started. And I just, like, I had this thought, like, I don't know if this was a bad show year or if I'm just have done, covered E3 enough times that I'm starting to get cynical about it. And there's probably some cynicism there. Welcome to sure. my world. But I just was like, I wasn't... I, I got excited about a few things, but in general, my, my view of the conference was just like, I mean, I'm looking forward to talking about this, but in general, I'm just like bored by half of it. Welcome to my world. I know. I know. And I also had the thought, like, I don't know if you're the best person to talk about this because I'm the optimist on our show and you're the pessimist. So, of course, you're going to reinforce the pessimism, but you're the only sounding board I have. You poor thing. I know. I know. Maybe we need but, to uh, you know, uh, go capture one of our uh, former co-hosts, <laughs> our third chairs, and bring them in. <laughs> and maybe they can reflect next week and actually send some stuff in for Community Corner. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, but yeah, I just I just had that thought and had to lead off like that. Like, I mean, we will obviously, we're going to get into each of the conferences and more details we go through, but I mean, I really felt like everybody pretty much was just down. I know uh, the I, conferences were, I wouldn't were say way more everyone, serious. Than I wouldn't say everyone. Uh, do you think that, oh, the, I do think the PC gaming show saw a serious uptick from last year. I do too. That, do that, that's I, that's like the gym for me. <laughs> yeah, I think Microsoft was pretty on the level with the past. I mean, for the most I part, for the most part, I complained that they used the word exclusive too much. But I mean, they had a pretty or standard Microsoft and a console. Yeah, uh, they had they had a standard Phil Spencer conference. Like Phil Spencer, just he knows how to do it. He knows what's up. But I mean, the Bethesda Bethesda also had that fun graphic thing. But in general, their conference was a letdown. Devolver was insane, but not in a good way. <laughs> I really liked the PC gaming show as well. Uh, I thought Ubisoft was okay, but I missed Aisha Tyler, so sad day. Sony was a disaster, and then uh, Nintendo a technical felt like disaster they... more than anything, though. Yeah, and then Nintendo felt like they were phoning it in. So, yeah, I just, I, I just wasn't feeling it this year. Maybe it's also. Uh... A lot of what we saw were little highlights from last year as well. Yeah, there was a lot less, check out this new thing, check out this thing coming in the distant future to get you hyped about. Although that might be a good thing. Maybe they're learning their lesson because the past couple of years have been filled with lots of pushback from people about like, quit hyping us up for stuff that's coming in three years and lying to us about what this game is going to look like or going to include. Or, damn it, no more Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I think it'll be a, the biggest surprise when we have an E3 that doesn't mention Minecraft or Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, that ain't never going to happen. Uh, when it does, while then. Bethesda could uh, milk that dead horse. Yeah, Microsoft, too. I mean, when that happens, the second coming of Christ is just around the corner. So, that's the time to repent. Um... 
yeah it's I think we should probably stop talking about this line because that <laughs> yeah. we're we're starting to get into both specific cons or specific, yeah. So let's uh, uh, go to your second uh, question. What do you yeah. think of all the streamers, YouTubers, and uh, countless hacks? Oh, sorry, huh. I got a little off track there. Being on stage and in promos, even more prevalent than it was last year. Well, I think I yeah. kind of just tipped my hand on what I thought. Yeah, I was. I'm in two minds about it. Uh, on the one hand, it's nice to see that all of these big companies are starting to realize, like, okay, all of our traditional means of advertising and promotion and all of that are becoming dated. Uh, this whole streaming and YouTube thing is actually going to... gonna It's going to go somewhere, thing. yeah. It's going to go somewhere. <laughs> They're late to the, the, the boat on that one, but... So, you know, on the one hand, it's it's nice to see them acknowledging, like, okay, we need to start moving this direction and meeting our, our consumers where they are. But on the other hand, it feels so cynical and so exploitative. Well, uh, and another they're thing. they're bringing up these people that no one has, like, I had, hadn't heard of a single person that they got on stage. I, I heard of a one. couple of them, but the thing is, a lot of these uh, people, they seem a lot better than what they are. And I, I'm... I shouldn't be one to talk because, you know, I'm terrible on YouTube as well. But there's this little thing called editing. And it was very apparent that some of them are used to making lots and lots of mistakes and just editing out all the bad bits. <laughs> there was one yeah. person during the EA conference, I can't remember his name, that looked like he was about to do an edit, you know, uh, you know whatever his signal was for an edit cut and start again at one point. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah. laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I I think that that we'll continue to see this for the next few years, and hopefully they improve it instead of making it worse. They need but... to get better quality ones because, uh, to be perfectly honest, the big name YouTubers are not essentially the most high quality of presenters, especially live presenters, and the ones that rely a lot more on editing and are less able to just riff off the cuff. Shouldn't be at a live fucking conference. Yeah, there were quite a few of them too that got like real, like you could tell they were feeling the pressure. Like the I, whoever it was that was in or, the or, EA conference that was doing the uh, Need for Speed, like he just like stopped. Like yeah, that's the one know. I was talking about. That looked like he was about to do an editing pop. You know, uh, whatever. You know, click his fingers or whatever to you know have a obvious spot in his uh, vocal track to uh, do a uh, uh, just a cut a, a splice and cut out a, a section. Yeah, but, thankfully but though, the audience the helped him out. They helped him out. They gave him some applause, and he he reset himself and kept going. How, yeah. how about this? How about this? Have it so that if you're going to use YouTubers and stuff, uh, have you know essentially your stable that you use. You know the same YouTubers for uh, for each company. I guess you know have their own little stables. But also, don't throw them on stage on E3 as their first damn gig granted a couple of them this wasn't their first time around not that you could tell the difference but still yeah as a matter of fact a couple of them were at the video game awards as well and you know they weren't much better there <laughs> yeah i mean though how can you i mean stand up to the shik hydrobot i mean come on that dude he's the best you just want to uh, wear out his uh lube strip absolutely uh, one, th one other thing I kind of noticed, uh, this is on your list, but did you notice a lot more prevalence of girl gamers this time around? Every time that I they did. had a uh, gamer on stage, no matter the fact that they actually used the gamer and, uh, instead of just having stock footage, I don't recall there being a guy gamer at all. No, there were they were guy gamers that they showed. But maybe uh, I but just, uh, not counting the people in the creator cave. No, no, I mean, I... I remember seeing some in but it was very shows, prevalent but... that you know uh they really were focusing on the girl gamers which is a, yeah. a terrible thing but it's one of those things that felt very exploitive exploitive when they just kept pointing it out you know yeah and they were doing that a lot too i don't know if you were watching well i know you watched some of the pre-show stuff but watching various streamers and things they had very prevalent female streamers and youtubers and things like oh this is you know whoever from what like i mean i don't recognize a lot of them uh, I mean, I don't recognize very many YouTubers or streamers, to be honest, but, you know, it was, like, very, like, front and center, like, hey, look, we've got a girl, we've got a girl. And look, like, tits! I, I'm, I'm cool with there being 
more equal representation. Yeah, but it still felt very exploited. uh, The same thing with the YouTubers just in general. Yeah, I wish that they would have just done it and not drawn attention to it. Like yeah. that would have been the best way to do it. Like just have these girls everywhere. That's cool. And then just like, you know, oh hey, there's some girls like, you know, the the audience can say, "Oh hey, there's a lot more female gamers this year." That's nice. But it felt like they were trying to say, "See, we're progressive. We're progressive. We have girls. We have more girls than the other guy. Come buy our games." Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, there were some places that did it right and I mean, I think this is going to come up a lot because both you and I had a lot of love for the PC gaming conference, but Uh I felt like they did it really well um, and didn't draw too much attention to it. So that was nice. Uh, But I think that's all of my pre-thoughts. Yeah, I just just threw one in uh, as a curveball to you. Yeah, but no, I I just, I didn't really even think about that because I didn't, I did a lot of skipping through things or like... Well, I... Did, even the ones that I watched on VOD, I didn't even skip. Yeah, I Apparently skipped some through of a lot them of was the a VOD. mistake, but yeah. Yeah, I I only got to watch two of the conferences live, this and that year. was the ones the with me. Watched. Yeah, which that was a lot of fun. I think next year we should plan to do a lot more of them that way. But like this weekend was just like crazy, and so and this week, so I, I wound up watching a lot of the VODs and and skimming through a lot of the crappy spots, but. The PC gaming was one of the ones that I watched all the way through. So, okie dokie. Then I think if we're done with our pre-thoughts, any any last thing you want to say before we just dive in? Oh, I'm not looking forward to talking about this first one. (laughs) So, closing thoughts on the uh, E3 in general, or we've we already done that? I mean, it's been four hours, so yeah. At the beginning of this, uh, seems like a yeah a lifetime ago. Like we've always been recording this particular podcast. Yeah. Well, uh, for our final thoughts, we've got a few just things to go over. Uh, Was there anything that we missed? Anything that maybe we sped past or that you thought of after the fact that you think we should touch on? I don't have anything, but do you? Uh, not really outside of baby looking at some of the montage games, but honestly, uh, yeah, they went by so quickly. It, uh, I would have to sit there with, uh, on the VOD and try to get each and every day, but then hunt down after the fact, what the fuck? Yeah. Okie dokie. And uh, everything just seemed so subdued for the most part. Yeah. So which conference do you think was the best one? PC Is- gaming. Okay, yeah, I also think it's PC gaming. We pretty I, I mean, there, I mean there's, I mean, there's no contest on that one. I'm just uh, closest would be probably the Microsoft one. See, I would say my second one would probably be the US, Ubisoft one, but they had the most games I was interested in beyond that. So, I most games I was really interested in, I should say. There were several Microsoft games I'm interested in, but. Most of them were further down on the list, in my mind. Uh, worst conference other than Devolver Digital? Oh, mm, that's a tough one for me. I, I would have to probably uh, give it to Nintendo. Really? Interesting. Why? Uh, probably a combination of just phoning it in and not caring. Fair enough. That's very good points. I think for me it was Sony. Uh, Sony is, the- a cl- uh, is a close second. Technical difficulties and then just having so many games that because Sony is so closed off to the rest of the gaming world, none of their titles come to PC and they except don't play one. nice. They don't, well, yeah, except one. And then they don't play nice with other devs for like cross platform play and stuff like that. Just, I feel like I was watching something from like five years ago. Um,. Well, that brings us to our last two questions, which are about the games from E3. What is the game that you most want to play now after watching the conference? Battletech. Nice. I really had no (laughs) idea where you were going to go on that. Not a clue. Why Battletech compared to anything else? Uh, It looked like a... uh, Well, essentially uh, the strategy portion of a mech warrior game and i've really wanted a proper mech warrior game for a long time and a uh, battletech was uh, something i wanted to play on a uh, tabletop simulator but it was just impossible to do well yeah there's like thirteen thousand pieces and rules and all that jazz 
Well, uh, Battletech was also mine, but I chose like a second one because I felt like Battletech was really obvious from how much I was gushing over it earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my second one was Far Cry 5. I didn't pick a second one, uh, so I would have to go back and look, and we're already at the four-hour mark. Yeah, no, that's fine. Like I said, the uh, only reason uh, I picked two was because I felt like Battletech was so obvious. Yeah, that... maybe the crew too, uh, depending on how it uh, does with its physics. Yeah. But that's just, you know, grabbing uh, right away without really thinking about it. Yeah, and then my reasons for picking Battletech are basically exactly what you said. Like, I love the Battletech series. I love the strategic elements much more than the sort of mech warrior take on that universe. So, very much looking forward to this. Uh, and it's supposed to release later this year, I think. Isn't it late 2017? I think so. So, hooray to that. It just completely uh, caught me completely off guard because, well, I missed the crowdfunding campaign uh, completely. So when it came up on the PC gaming show, it's like, what is this? Yeah. Okay. And then the other question about games from the show is what was your biggest surprise? Well, I, well I had two, but I'm going to go with one and I'll still say the second one. I think my biggest surprise was Sea of Thieves just because of how much it improved over last year. Okay. My other one, well, let's hear yours first, and we'll see if it's my backup. Uh, Anthem. Actually, no. I was so, like, so, it, that just came out of nowhere, and I was so excited by the prospect of an Iron Man RPG. I was shocked that uh, wasn't your most wanted to play. It, it's hard to beat Battletech. But it's so far away, like, with it just being, like, teased this year, we'll probably get a much more in-depth trailer next year. I'd say Anthem's not coming out until at the earliest, late 2018, like holiday 2018. Yeah. Maybe not even until 2019. So, it was well, it it was giving Battletech a, a run for its money, with it, but with it being so far away, I yeah. was like, I gotta go Battletech. Yeah, my backup, uh, I think it's kind of obvious once you think about it. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah, absolutely. Great, uh, there's no way for me to play it, so, you know, it gets bumped. Yeah. No, that's fair. And I mean, that probably would have been my biggest surprise, honestly, if I hadn't been paying attention when all the leaks came out and, and, uh, yeah, all reason to see if these uh, got, got on was that it will be playable. And I could see that being a stream night game. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, Sea of Thieves looks good. I'm definitely interested in it. So hopefully it, it is it, good. It, it improved amazingly since last year. Maybe it's just, that, you know, I'm remembering more of the cringy uh, streamers that they had. No, it definitely was improved from last year. Um, but that's maybe that's most of the reason why I remember it from last year as well. So maybe they, got, you know, uh, they served their point. Yeah. Well, uh, so the Odyssey is done. Granted, it's not a Super Mario one, but we are finished with the E3 Extravaganza 2017. 